Okay guys, so in this video we're going to be talking about graphing exponential functions. So if you guys remember an exponential function is a relationship in which you're multiplying or dividing by a constant amount each time, um, which means that it grows really fast because we're multiplying each time the previous number um, with, the, uh, with the base or the multiplicative factor, if you will. Um, so we have two scenarios. We're going to have either exponential growth or exponential decay. And what that looks like is if we have exponential growth, it means that the graph is actually literally growing. It's going up, right? It's getting bigger. Uh, so we're multiplying by number every single time. In this case, from left to right, if we read it like a book, it goes upwards. Um, so this would be an, an example of exponential growth. Exponential decay uh, would be going downwards. Now, how do we know whether it's going to be exponential growth or decay? Well, if you remember, the formula for an exponential function is f of x equals a times b to the power of x, right? Uh, so the number b is the one that's under the power. Um, so in this case, we have a times b to the power of x. If b is uh, a number between 0 and 1, or less than 1, if you will. So if b, um, actually, I should say, if b is greater than 1, we're going to have exponential growth. So if b is bigger than 1, if it's a number that's bigger than 1, we're going to have exponential growth. And then if b is a fraction between 0 and 1, so 0 is less than b, but b is less than 1. So basically, when b is between 0 and 1, or a fraction uh, less than 1, we we're going to have exponential decay. It's going to be dividing every single time by a number. Okay, that being said, let's practice some, uh, some little quick examples about growth or decay. So how do we know which is which? So let's do some examples real quick, identifying some important terms. Um, so the instructions say state whether each function will be exponential growth or exponential decay. Also provide the y-intercept for these three examples, example one, two, and three. So let's uh, crank that one out real quick. Example number one, the y-intercept or the a is the number that's in front. In this case, the number that's in front changes for every single one of these. Uh, the y-intercept for the first one, second one, and third one will change. For the first one, the y-intercept will be equal to 10, the number in the front. The second one, the y-intercept, will be equal to 100. And the third one, the y-intercept, will be equal to 5. So the number in the front will be the y-intercept where it touches the y-axis, a.k.a. if you're looking at the graph, that would be that line right there. Uh, B is the number that is inside the parentheses or under the x, if you will. Sometimes they don't have parentheses. So B in this case is equal to 3 over 4. Okay, so 3 over 4. Uh, B for this one. It's equal to 1.05, so I'm going to write 1.05 here. And for the last one, P of X, uh, B is equal to 1.2. Now, how do we know whether these guys are going to be growing or decaying? Well, let's just write that down. Remember the rule. If, if the fraction here, if, if the value of B is going to be less than 1, it's going to be an exponential decay. So in this case, 3 over 4 is 0.75, which is less than 1. So this will be exponential decay. It's actually going to be going down if you graph it. For the second one, uh, it's bigger than 1, so it's going to be exponential growth. So it's going to be going up if you graph it. And the last one, it's bigger than 1 as well. It's not very much bigger, but it's going to be bigger nonetheless. So that's also going to be exponential growth. Uh, the bigger they are, the faster they increase. Um, the, the closer they are to 1, the slower they increase, but essentially they're going to increase either way or go down either way. Okay, uh, that being said, now that you know, now that I know you guys are cool, um, now, now that you know how, uh, what the general rules for exponential growth and decay, uh, let's do examples 4, 5, and 6. So example number 4, we're going to be graphing... This function, if you notice, the 5 is the y-intercept, so we have to graph it on the y-axis. I'm going to make a little dot at uh, the 5. So go to the 5, which is down here, and make a point. There's your y-intercept. Boom, because the y-intercept is equal to 5, positive 5. Now, the number that you're multiplying by is right here, right? So this number happens to be b equals 3. So b equals 3, that means we're multiplying by 3. So, if my first number is 5, again, I read these graphs like a book from left to right, right? From left to right. So, if my first number is 5, my next number has to be 5 times 3, which is 15. I'm going to put a dot at the 15. My number after that would be 15 times 3, which is 45. And my number after that would be 45 times 3, 
which is 135, and that number is way out of my range, so I'm just going to stop at this one. Uh, if I go to the left, it's going to be divided by 3, right? Because to the right is getting bigger, to the left should be getting smaller. So 5 divided by 3 would actually give me a decimal of 1.6, uh, which is, uh, give or take, really close to the line. And then if I divide that by 3 again, I get a really small number, which is 0.55. And then I divide that by 3 again, I get a really, really small number. So anyways, point is, you guys get the idea of the general graph. Uh, it's going to be from left to right, increasing it's going to be an exponential growth crossing through these points going in that direction so this is the graph of the function so we're going to say that this is going to be an exponential growth function okay let's do a few more and then we will be done so this one let's graph it so first of all the y-intercept so the y-intercept is in front of the parentheses typically, so that's going to be equal to 20, so I'm going to graph that y-intercept on the y-axis. Get it? Hint, hint, y-intercept. So 20 will be the y-intercept. We're going to put a big dot right on that. Uh, in this case, the b is 1 over 5, so notice that it's not 5. It's actually 1 over 5. So if b is 1 over 5, that means that is, it's actually less than 1. So we're not multiplying. We're actually dividing by 5 right, because uh, our value is 1 over 5, meaning that we're dividing by 5. Now, if this is 20, uh, my next number should be 20 divided by 5, which gives me 4. Uh, 4, if I were to graph that to on the right side, is going to be about halfway. And then if I do it again, so my next number should be 4 divided by 5, which is 0 0.8, so it's really small. And if I do it again on the right side of that, I divide that number by 5, and I get... 0.16 which is really really small and I'm doing these numbers with the calculator so I don't feel like I'm like doing everything in my head uh, it's right there so don't feel uh, feel if you feel like you need to use a calculator for this go for it it makes life so much easier so uh, decimal 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 20 if I'm going to the left notice that it's going to be getting bigger right so I'm going to be multiplying by 5 so 20 times 5 will actually give me 100 so the next space over at negative 1 I'm going to be at 100 and then the next space over after that, a negative 2, I'm going to be at 500, which is out of my range. So I'm not even going to bother graphing that. I'm just going to make the decay function. And moving on with the next one. Just make sure you guys make it curvy. Be very careful about making it curvy. And be also very careful about not letting it touch the x-axis because it never really gets there. All right. So first one was an exponential growth. Growth. Sorry. Second one is going to be an exponential decay because it's going down. Cool. Um, last one, just to make sure you guys got it, or if you guys, if you do have it, you probably stopped this video a long time ago, but for the heck of it, let's go over the last one. Uh, 1 over 2 is going to be my y-intercept, so don't let the fractions outside the parentheses trick you. Uh, it just means that the y-intercept is 1 over 2, which is still a number, right? 1 over 2 is 1 half, so it's going to be half of a square. So... That'll be my y-intercept between 0 and 1. And now, every single time, my, my value of b, my base, is equal to 4. So that means that I'm going to be multiplying by 4 each time. So if my first number is 1 half, my second number is 1 half divided by, I'm sorry, not divided by, multiplied by 4, which gives me 2. So at 1, I'm going to have 2. Right? I multiplied that first term, which is 1 half or 0 0.5 times 4, which, which gave me 2. And then I do it again. 2 times 4 gives me 8. We can do that in our heads, right? So that's going to be the next dot. And then I do it again. 8 times 2 gives me 16. So my next space over is going to be at 16, which is... Oh, I, I cluttered it. But anyway, it's supposed to be here. And uh, that's the gist of it. Um, we can divide it by... 4, uh, if we go to the left, so this number divided by 4 would give me something really small, and then something really small, and something really small. So essentially, the graph is going to look like the other, uh, like the first example that I did of the graphing once. So just make sure you make it curvy. It should look kind of like a ramp, not a line, right? It's not a linear function. It's an exponential, so make it curvy, please. So there we go. Uh, the function of, uh, the graph of this function, 1 over 2, Parentheses, 4 to the power of x, looks like this, and it is going to be an exponential growth because it's increasing from left to right. Okay, guys, I uh, hope this was helpful. Um, have fun. I'll see you guys in the next one.